When I was in my 20s, as a side hustle, I started organizing conferences and ended up making over $200,000. In this video, I'm gonna show how you can do the exact same for your industry. And in case you're like, ah, conferences are boring, which they might be for you, let me tell you a quick story. There's a guy who read my blog on okdork.com about how to start conferences. His name is Sam Part, maybe you've heard of him. So Sam started HustleCon and ended up making a few million dollars from his conferences, which sounds good. Then he said, well, this conference is cool, but maybe I should start a newsletter. Now it's called The Hustle. And recently he sold The Hustle for eight figures to HubSpot. Maybe conferences aren't a bad business. Let's take a step back. How did I get started organizing conferences? No, I did not go to college for a conference party planner. I was just actually a cubicle monkey who graduated school, was living at my mom's house, and I worked at Intel. I didn't have anyone around me. So I thought, man, I'd love to really start putting on events and just be meeting other cool people. So I asked the smartest friends I knew and I said, hey, who are the smartest friends that you know that I should meet? And what I did is I messaged all those people. I said, hey, I'm gonna host a happy hour. I'll pay for everything. Happy hour is the cheapest time of day. It's my favorite time of day. And in Mountain View, California, off of Castro Street, there's a bar, it's not around anymore. I invited these people and five of them ended up coming. Through that, I met Ramit Sethi and a lot of other really, really smart people. And that's what kind of got me going, starting organizing small events as a side hustle, which ended up leading to large events, conferences called Community Next, which ended up making $200,000, which still kind of blows my mind to this day. If you want to start meeting interesting people and become a hub and honestly have more fun in life, start putting on cool activities. When I was in LA, I wanted to meet other YouTubers. So I put on a driving experience. I got to meet Arak and Jake Tran and all these other really interesting people. So think about for yourself, who do I want to meet and what kind of events, frankly, do I want to go to myself? So when I was working at Intel, I started just reaching out and coordinating fun activities. I called the group Entrepreneur 27. It was a bunch of entrepreneurs less than 27. So I created a dodgeball event called Capital versus Labor. Yeah, basically the VCs just threw balls at us. But I met Hunter Walk, who's pretty famous, and Jeremy Liu and a bunch of other really interesting people. I put on a wine and cheese event. My friend Alyssa Rapp had a company called Bottle Note. So I said, hey, can you hook up with wine? And then I got my buddy Ori Broffman, who's an author. And then we had the event in his house and I just hit up people and was like, hey, I don't know you, but we're gonna have this free event. You might enjoy it. A big thing with just any level of success, whether it's conferences, whether it's gonna be a startup, is that just get momentum going. Momentum begets momentum. I think that's one of the key elements of my success in my career is that I just start doing things and I notice, okay, this is working. Let me follow this path. So my goal was never to make a lot of money. This is while I had a day job. My goal was to have fun for myself and just meet interesting people. Don't try to overcomplicate it. One of the things I highly wanna recommend is that if you're in India, if you're in Romania, shout out my Romanians, if you're in America, wherever you are around the world, you can host an online event. You can go hit up YouTube creators that are tiny and just getting going and say, hey, can I host an event for you? You can actually be their broker. Or will you come speak in an event that's online and it'd be a great way for you to start getting practice, meeting cool people, and eventually, yes, you can create larger online events or offline and make significant money doing that. So how did I go from tiny events to creating $50,000 conferences? Pretty interesting transition. So there's two key things, whether you're creating a conference or frankly, any type of business. Number one, create your dream scenario. So for me, I, had, I was doing consulting work after I got fired by Facebook and I thought, man, I would really love to go to a conference to talk about social networks. I'm a weird guy, that's what I wanna talk about. But I wanted to hear from Guy Kawasaki, from suicidegirls.com, from Plenty of Fish, from Threadless, from James Hong, from Max Levchin of Slide and PayPal. And I was like, man, that would be so amazing to go hear those people talk. And so write out, what would be your dream conference? For me, I wanted Hawaiian food for lunch, not some crappy ass conference hotel food. I wanted Red Bulls all day. I wanted an open bar. Yes, now maybe some of that stuff is more common, but just create the event that even if no one else shows up, you are gonna be the audience, that annoying person that's like, man, two thumbs up, I'm having a good time. Now, number two, and again, this is almost just as important in any business, but specifically with conferences, was create a minimum viable budget. What is the minimum amount of cost that I need to make to make this event break even? And one of the key things in any event is get to break even as fast as possible so that everything else is on top. And frankly, you don't have to stress out about it. So this is our first ever budget on the original Community Next. It looks like I spent around $42,000 uh, on the original event, breakfast, uh, snacks, lunch, drink, PayPal, wine, hotels. Yes, yeah, some speakers, I'm looking at you, Josh and Aaron, I love you guys. They wanted hotels and other experiences. So it looked like overall, we had to make $42,000 back. Now, if you actually look at the top part, uh, once I got our minimum viable budget on that, it was that, wow, how do I make $40,000? Which is a lot of cash, especially at that time. I think at Intel, I was making $60,000 a year uh, pre-tax. So we had our early bird tickets, mid tickets, discount tickets, regular tickets. Uh, and what you're really trying to do here is like, what is the minimum I need to sell uh, to make sure I don't have to worry about money? Because I don't think you should be losing money in the conferences. And as it turned out in my conferences, the ticket sales to individuals is what broke even and what helped me get to break even. And all these sponsorships is where all my profit actually came in from. If you want more videos from Uncle Noah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I put out three juicy business videos every single week to help you get your business or side hustle off the ground. 
Now that you have a dream and you have a budget, there's basically three key things that you need to focus on. Your venue, your date, and then the kind of a key reason to start selling tickets. Basically a flagship speaker or something you can start convincing people for. So a date and a location, you basically wanna make sure there's not a lot of things going on. And I found a location on Stanford campus that was a free conference room. Yes, I asked some students at Stanford, can you book this conference room for me on a Saturday that I saw that there wasn't an events around? And so that's what made the event really affordable to do. You do it at the Hilton or some crazy hotel, you have to do all these ticket things, they make you use their food, it's a rip off. So now speakers, you wanna have a reason that someone comes to your event. So I had a date, I had a venue, I hit up Guy Kawasaki and said, will you speak for one hour at my event? He said, sure. Now you're probably thinking, Noah, how did you get Guy Kawasaki? If you had no social media, you had no Instagram, you had nada, you, did, you had hair then. But I spent years actually reaching out and helping Guy with his blog and his books and buying his stuff. After years, I said, hey Guy, I have an event, you kind of know who I am. Do you mind coming to this? And he was like, sure. I didn't even pay him as a speaker fee. I think now it would probably be like 30 or $50,000 to get him to speak. Shout out Guy Kawasaki. Go buy his book, Art of Start. Highly recommend it. Now, how do you get other speakers for your conference? Let me go through an example. Let's say that I wanted to create an event today. Let's just hypothetical. Now, the question for myself is what conference would I want to go to today? How much would I pay for it? So my dream conference today, I would call the nine figure conference. So I want to meet nine figure founders, people who've either sold or started and are running companies above that level. So my first thought is like, well, what kind of speakers could I actually have access to or potentially get to come to that? The first two to come to mind, who would you do? For me, it'd be Mark Cuban, Justin Kahn. They're public, they want attention. It seems like they wanna grow their YouTube and their online presence. So I would contact them and say, hey, can I pay you money or what would make it worth it for you to come be at this conference? I would go then do my budget. How much is it gonna cost for them? How much are flights? How much is the hotel? Have a minimum viable budget for my conference. Now you might be thinking, one, how do I get speakers if I don't have any relationship with them? One, start today building relationship with speakers. So go help them on things that they need. So go and see what they're promoting, what they're working on, and either be a customer of them or see how you can help facilitate that. Now on the other side, if you don't have an audience today to promote to your events, that's what you should start doing. Start on YouTube, start the podcast. Again, start an email list, which I've talked about before. So now that you kind of have that stuff locked out, most important thing is how do I get people to come to my event? And what are some key elements of successful conferences? So how do you get them to take action now to come to your event? Number one, early bird ticket sales. Hey, we're only gonna sell 10 tickets at this price and then it's gonna get raised. A lot of the ticket sales happen at the end. Most people that go to conferences find out about it through a friend. So you wanna try to either create group ticket sales. Hey, three tickets for the price of one. Give them a discount code to give out to their friends. Yes, they're gonna be your greatest salespeople. Now that people are coming out of COVID, they're gonna be telling everyone, and oh, what trips are you taking this year? I'm, I'm sure people have asked you that. Other ways that you can sell tickets. Go to some influencers and give them tickets to give away to their audiences. One, it makes them look good. Most people have to hear something seven times before they're ready to take action. One suggestion for that, that worked really well for me, is that do advertising against your speakers. So if you have Guy Kawasaki and your event is in the Bay Area, you can advertise to Bay Area people that like Guy Kawasaki. So if it's a giveaway, if it's an ad, if it's on a website, if it's an email, whatever it is, make sure that you keep promoting it actively to the people you wanna to come to your conference. Now, one thing that we did at our events that I really recommend is record a lot of the speakers. That creates great free marketing that you can now promote to a bunch of other people so that they wanna to come to your future events. Now, I wanna check out our original website and get some like fond memories of this stuff. All right, so our site was communitynext.com. And yes, this is from 2007. Now, one of the things that I, I'm looking at this conference and I see some of the speakers, Alexis Ohanian, yes, as a Raskin, yes, his dad was one of the early guys at Apple. Otis Chandler, founder of Goodreads. Rami Bittar, this guy's a very famous guy. Pete Cashmore of Mashable. Tom Conrad, this guy has gone on to do Snapchat and a bunch of other amazing things. Now, one of the most benefits of having conferences is you're gonna meet so much amazing people. Because I was able to meet these people really early in their career, it made really great relationships that are still paying dividends now, literally, was this 15 years later? Key thing with your conferences is iterate as you go. So as we were doing the conference, we didn't really have sponsors. And I was like, yeah, we should add sponsors. Then people started asking for sponsors. Another thing that we added and we iterated on was VIP dinners. Some people were like, hey, I wanna meet the speakers. And I was like, huh. What if we could sell tickets to that and there's a speaker dinner so they get to have a good dinner and it's free for the speakers. So the VIP dinner is what came about. If you like this video and you want more ideas for side hustles that can make $1,000 a month starting today, I highly recommend you check out this video up here. And if you haven't subscribed to the video, Uncle Noah, yes, me, wants to send you more videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below. I love you and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.